Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're in Manchester at one of BEV's latest charging hubs. And I'm here with James G, or is it G? It's G. G. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. And you are the head of community at BEV? Yeah, so I'm community manager at BEV, um, and kind of double in everything to do with the customer and how we just improve experience, basically. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna have a brief overview of basically what's at this site, what equipment BEV use, because James is quite an EV nerd, so we're quite good to get an insight of what tech they're using and stuff. And also, um, we're also going to discuss some like EV charging things you might not know, like voltages and things, just little bits and pieces you might not might not know. Um, so the first thing, we're going to look at the um, sort of the questions I had. Um, when people charge an EV, I guess they don't really have any idea of what is going on. It's similar to when you charge a phone, you plug your phone in and it, it does some sort of handshakes to work out how much power it should have. You've just told me that's the same with an EV, isn't it? Pretty so, much. Yeah. yeah, so how it works is that uh, once you plug in, like you say, there's a handshake that goes on, a bit of a chat between the car and the charger. Um, you know, the, the most important thing, I guess, is, is voltage range. Yeah. So a site like this, we're running at a 500 volt uh, site. Most EVs on the road are kind of 400 volt range. Right, okay. Some are 800 volt. Uh, that means that kind of uh, when you plug in, it'll establish a voltage range. It will, the car will kind of make sure everything's okay with earthing and all that sort of stuff, uh, and then we'll request a current. Yeah. So one of the issues when people are charging is they'll they'll say, oh, it's going really slow, charger must be broken. 99% uh, of the time is that the car is just asking for less than yeah. you think it should. So whether that's charging curve um, as your battery's fuller, or whether it's down to temperature, um, the car's just too cold to accept its kind of peak speeds. Yeah, because we plug this in. So I've got the Aura 03 here, I'm charging it. I think it can take about 65 kilowatt, uh, but we plugged it in. You showed me on your laptop the, the back end page of it, and it was requesting 54, wasn't it? So it's not quite as high as it should be, but yeah, um, it's just it's just how it goes, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so like we kind of put a, a little icon on here that will show you what is limiting your speed. So in Useful. this case, it's vehicle. Um, some sites you'll see where it's uh, a site level limitation. So when there's a really busy site and it's kind of maxing out what's here. Yeah. Sometimes it's a charger limitation. So if you plugged in, you know, these are 150 kilowatt running 375 amp cables. Yeah. If you plug in uh, a long range Tesla that wants to do kind of 500 plus amps, that would be a charger limit at, at yeah, that yeah. situation. Hmm. And it will tell you on that screen basically why, exactly why that particular charge experience you're having isn't quite as fast as it yeah, should be. Yeah, right. And uh, the other thing about this kind of temp power stuff, which is quite cool, is uh, unplug in. If there is a limitation to the site, it will tell you what the maximum is you can expect. Right. So literally on here, um, we've got a site uh, up in the Lake District, which is a, a cute little site. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because of the power there, we could only get 200 kilowatts to the site. Right, OK. Because uh, it's challenging with power supply and stuff. But we put in four ultra rapid bays that shares that 200 kilowatts. So if someone's plugged in, it will literally tell you, you know, the maximum you're going to get at this moment in time is, you know, 75 kilowatts, for example. If you've only got 200 kilowatts on a particular site, if someone plugs in and gets, will they get 150 straight away? Yeah. And if someone second plugs in, will it will it load out both of them, or mm. will it? So the clever <laughs> brains of the chem power stuff is that it takes a few different things into account. It will take into account the actual vehicle. So when you okay. plug in. Um, it will tell on CCS, will tell the charger on map address. From that, the charger will be able to go, oh, this is an Aura Funky Cat, or an Aura 03, or this is a Tesla Model 3. Or, oh, wow. So it can establish the car, and from that, it knows what its kind of charging profile is and what it will be able to take. So there's that side of it. That's incredible. Which is really cool. Uh, and then there is the other side, which is, um, you know, this car, you know, is demanding loads more than this car. Yeah. So it just kind of finds a kind of happy medium which is nice Interesting. Um, so some with like static load balancing we'll just cut it in half so we use uh, a model of charger on some sites called a Raptor 150 that does exactly that so it'll do 150 kilowatts to one car or it'll split in half and do 75 to two yeah there's a, this is a bit clever I've used a charger before I don't, I don't remember the brand of it but it was it was like it could do 75 total for the for the both chargers and then if someone else plugged in yeah. the person that was first got dibs basically yeah 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 and then the second person had to wait they got like 25 whatever it was so you, so. you can configure that on these uh and you can do within the back end it's quite fun you can set priority bays if you want to so if you want to have the mm. you know you're always going to get peak speeds over there yeah can do that it's not what we do but you can yeah uh, you can do that first come first served you can kind of configure it however you want it to be we think in the name of kind of customer experiences 
let the charger figure it out based yeah. on what the cars are asking for, and then it usually works out yeah. okay. I guess you guys have seen a good experience with that in terms of feedback and stuff. Yeah, so that site in particular is like super small power supply for four ultra rapid bays. Yeah. So that, you know, does a bit of throttling here and there. On a site like this, you know, we've got 15 bays here. You're never going to see a power limit. So you're always going to get what you need. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a good site. So this one's Stockport, it's near Manchester, but, um, and this is one of your largest, larger sites? Yeah, or? yeah. So, uh, yeah, 15 bays, one of our larger sites, um, just off the M60. So. Yeah. You know, kind of built with two things in mind is you've kind of got Decathlon here with a nice cafe and loos and stuff. So it's summer if you're shopping, it's something if you're on the M60. It's a kind of mixture of, you know, what people are looking for. So. The other thing I was going to ask you, I posted a picture yesterday, I thought Friday or Saturday, I think. <laughs> I was using some Sainsbury's chargers, same brand, Kempower, and one person had some feedback and was saying, oh, why is there only one Chadamo yeah. socket this picture? I've noticed this one, you've probably got four. Yes. You've got four or five. And I, I did ask your input on the tweet because I know you know a lot about EVs. That the the um, people could like there's only one. I don't think there's any cars on sale anymore that have Chadamo. I think the Nissan Leaf is practically discontinued at this point. Um, and d how does that factor in when you're deciding to build a new site like this one? How many of each you're going to build? Because you can imagine this situation where they, they've all the CCS twos are used and there's like just the Chadamo ones free. So I was like, uh, can't charge my car. So, so. It's a balance, right? So I used to have an old Zoe, which was Type 2 only. So I really do have like, uh, I have sympathy for people with yep. older connector standards. I really, really do. Um, but, the, you know, it's not just a case of, uh, well, how many cars are on the road? We have to look at the data and go, we've got an entire network. Um, and how much of the Chadamo, you know, cons how much consumption is Chadamo? Uh, and it's very, very low. So, the, but on the other side, it's you want to provide experiences for everyone. So there's, there's two sides to it. So Makes sense. it's a kind of a, it's a discussion about what we think's nearby. Have we got other sites with Chadamo nearby? Have we got, you know, the other thing is space. So with a CPO like us, you know, we, we don't own this decathlon store. So we're working within the parameters um, of a site with our site partners. Um, so, and every decision impacts how many bays you can put in. It impacts, uh, you know, how much space you can have between the bays, all that kind of thing. So, another thing on here as well is, so for this unit, you've got dual CCS. Yeah. These both operate at the same time. There's no uh, impact, you know, whatever someone's pulling speed-wise, it doesn't impact whoever's next to you, which is great. Um, if you've got a Chadamo and a CCS, only one will operate at one time. Right, I've seen that before somewhere so as well. Uh, yeah. I think I think grid serve locations. I think I, I came across that problem with when well, I was testing the old Aura last year, yeah. and I came across that exact problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, I plugged it in, and then um, it, it, yeah, I'd had to wait for something to finish. So yeah, so so essentially, if we want to do a CCS and a Chadamo, uh, we have to put in one of these satellites for every single bay. Now that means it's more expensive to build the site, it means there's more to maintain. It also means there's less space between each bay because you'll see the amount of space that it takes to do you know, yes. one each there, whereas this is a bit thinner and we can have more space between the bays. So there's that consideration too. So it's not just as simple as put Chadamo on and then we'll replace it later, unfortunately. It is very much, uh, you know, let, let's think about it holistically. Yeah, yeah. Let's think you've got 15 bays, how many Chadamo cars are you gonna have at once? So. One thing we do prioritise is when we have big accessible bays like that, we try and always do Chadamo on those do both, yeah. so that you've got you know the best of both worlds there. Yeah, and I guess on the the, the back end system of the of the, the charger, you can see when and where the last charger was used, when, yes. when this one was used, when it was used. So you've got actually got proper data on how much it's not just people's drive by assessments of the site. <laughs> so no, I mean, no. Um, and you know, and to be quite honest, you know, every decision we make in terms of the infrastructure we put in the ground, yeah, that has an impact on on the cost. It has an impact yeah, yeah. on the experience. Planning so, permission as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything everything matters. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just a, a case of you know put Chadamo on every bay. We we really wish we could, um, yeah. but it's it's a balance, unfortunately. The other question I had was, um, I've tested a number of 800 volt cars over the past few months, um, so Genesis GV60 and Kia EV9 and stuff. Uh, could you could you give like a, a, a layman's example of why those cars only charge? So, for example, um, on a for this 400 volt and 800 volts, so this Aura is 400 volt. I know the the eGMP platform, the Bionic 5 and stuff, is 800 volt. Yeah. What's the main technical reason why those cars can only do about 100 kilowatt on yeah. those other chargers? So, and I'll touch on a couple of examples yeah. as well. So, eGMP, uh, you plug in 
on a 500 volt charger. Yeah. So it's quite clever. So it will, it, it basically has 400 coming in. The battery pack is configured as 800 volts. Yeah. Um, so at the cell level, there's no difference whatsoever. So the cells are, are the same, but it's how it's configured. Right. So you've got an 800 volt pack, you've got 400 volts coming in simply, uh, and it's got to boost it up. So there's a few different ways you can do that. So on EGMP, it uses the rear motors inverter to boost up the voltage from right. four to 800 volt. Thanks about. It's actually 650 volts or something, but it's 800 volt class. Yeah. So they think of those two classes. So that uses the rear motor and the rear motor in EGMP, I think it's 230 amps that it can do. So once it's maxed out that 230 amps, you know, we see that if you have uh, Ionic 5 EV6, yep. on 500 volt infrastructure, we'll do 104 kilowatts and that's it. Um, so, and th th there's other ways to do that as well though. So look at Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, really? That's on yeah. a thousand volt architecture. Yeah. The same thing. So Tesla supercharger is a 500 volt. These are 500 volt. If you plugged a, a Cybertruck into one of these, that does it a different way. So it will split oh. the pack in half. So wow. if you think it will split it so that you've essentially got two 400 volt battery packs, that's, that's another way to do it. Yeah. That's another crazy. way is uh, Porsche Taycan. So on the J1 chassis, which is Porsche Taycan and uh, each one GT, first generation, they have an onboard booster, which does the same thing, which will take in 400 and boost it up to 800. As standard, it was only 50 kilowatts. Right. So you've got these super duper yeah, cars, yeah. which I think Gen 1 did 270 kilowatts and would only do 50 kilowatts on 500 volt infrastructure, uh, unless you paid for an option to yeah. do 150. Um, on the new Taycan, that's solved got, and yeah. it's standard at 150. So huh. there's a few different ways to do it, but essentially what you've got to think of it as, um, what, once you kind of match at the, at the voltage yeah. range, so the charger and the car match, and then it's a case of how much current will the car take at that voltage range. Um, so, you know, on, on, on those vehicles, it's a bit of a limit, unfortunately. Yeah, that's going to be quite, it's going to be quite complicated for a lot of people to work out, I think, and then realise why. Do you think over time that there'll be, because it, even if you look back 10 years, EV, the EV, mar like the EV market is so new still. Sure. Do you think we're going to get to a point where <clears throat> there'll be a set voltage everyone uses and then nothing's going to be a problem anymore. Yeah, yeah, think? yeah. I mean, even with MCS for truck charging, they're establishing their voltage standards and stuff. So I, you know, I think a thousand volt is, is what we'll start to see a lot of platforms level out at 800 volt, thousand volt, same thing. Um, which is why when we're looking at new locations, you know, th there's also a cost difference between 500 volt and a thousand volt architecture. Um, so it's not as simple as just do 800 volt everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and there's other things as well, you know, you look at units like this, this will be 375 amps, uh, but these are air-cooled, so these are, there's no liquid cooling. No liquid cooling. Um, that means that, you know, they're simpler, they're more reliable, you might have rocked up to a certain brand's super fast chargers and only got 30 kilowatts, it's because the cable cooling faults all the time. So, you know, sometimes simpler is better and 375 amps will kind of do everything for yep. most people. Um, but yeah, so again, every kind of one of those decisions has an impact on the overall site. Yeah, um, so we're going to have a look around the site now and sort of see the infrastructure that makes up a standard charging site. You did mention that each one of your sites is a little bit different. So this one's sort of one of the variants of that. Yeah, I, so every, every site is an opportunity for us to kind of improve the experience. And we have, you know, we have quite a big member base. We also have some test drivers, which is like a closer group of people yeah. that give us direct feedback and stuff. Um, so every site's an opportunity to make improvements, whether that's the wrap of the chargers, whether that's what's on the screens, whether that's the bay markings, the icons, the app, yep. you know, what the power banks look like, where things are. Every single little thing yep. is evolving with every new location, uh, which it's hopefully means that every newer site is, is better. Um, so this is your power packs, essentially, that the distribution for the charger, for the charging site? Yeah, so typical chargers, as time's gone by, uh, are an all-in-one kind of design where the actual charger itself and all of the cables and screens and stuff are all in a unit. Yeah. When you have a bigger site like this, it's a bit of a waste of hardware to put all of that charger stuff at every single bay. It also means that you'd, you'd take up loads of room. So when we're doing a bigger site, we think what we call a satellite arrangement is better than an all-in-one. So that means that in these big green boxes, this is all the chargers. So you've kind of got loads of charging hardware and the best part of it is that it's modular. So you could, you know, put a site in at 500 kilowatts and expand it. Um, the other thing is that on a site, you can load balance between every single bay. So whether there's a Porsche Taycan taking loads of speed down there or whether there's just a i3 taking yeah. some speed up here, you can balance that um, depending on what the site needs. So yeah, I guess kind of in terms of the big boxes on a site, you've got substation. You'll see those on supermarkets and housing yep. developments and stuff. 
um, so that has a certain amount of KVA or power that you take from the grid. You then have a feeder pillar in the middle and then you've got your power banks. So that's kind of standard across all the you know, electrical installations. Um, and then yeah, so, and then the power banks obviously kind of create the charging power and feed it out all to different satellites. Nice, it also I guess the, having everything in, in here reduced the amount of cabling as well down to each site, down to each, or not really? Uh, it, sort of, yeah, it's, it's more, it's, so there's a couple of things, it's, it's space and it's experience. So we kind of don't like the idea that charging in the future is going to be big scary grey boxes yeah, yeah. at every parking space. We don't really want to build that future. We yep. think, you know, the the things you interact with should be small and nice and charming. And, yep. and so that's what we try and build. And we think these do a better job at kind of, you know, creating more space and creating a, just a better site. Yeah, it definitely um, looks a lot more friendly, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, um, in terms of about being smart with the deployment of infrastructure, there's only so much power that we can kind of take from the grid in certain locations. Yep. So doing something like this means that instead of putting, you know, a 400 kilowatt charger at every single bay, we can be smarter and we can take less power from the grid while still giving everyone a good charge. So you'll see that my vehicle has slowed right down now. So it's doing 72%, only doing 37 kilowatts. Um, some new drivers would be like, the charger says 150 and my car can do 100. The charger's <laughs> broken. And genuinely, you know, we, we see a lot of drivers think that. It's because there's not a great deal of education out there, um, which is why we do things like add vehicle limits and stuff. Um, but if we take a peek at the back end, you can kind of see that what's happening at the moment um, is that the car's doing 37.2 kilowatts. So it's a 427 volt pack uh, and it's only taking 89 amps at the moment. Um, and you can see that power limit by vehicle request, you know, it's only asking for 37.7. These chargers are offering 50. So the, the charger, in simple terms, is kind of going, hey, tell you what you need, here's 50. And the car is always limiting in this situation how much speed is, is going into the battery pack. I plugged the, um, the Aura 03 in earlier, and James has shown me the charging curve of the car. Um, so you can see at the bottom there's the red, you've got the voltage, and the voltage it just climbs over time as it's getting fuller. And then it just tells you the, the rate of charge as well. So it started off at 55, dipped down again for some reason, <laughs> and then back up again. So. There's a lot more behind the scenes than just plugging your car in. So that's been a, a look at the insights and sort of bits and pieces and the nuts and bolts behind what makes up a standard or sort of a BEV charging station and also some questions and things from, from yourself. Um, if, if you've got anything to promote online or Twitter, Twitter account or anything? Uh, no, I mean, go follow us. We've always got stuff going on, some nice new content here and yeah. there uh, and plenty of new hubs coming all around the UK. So yeah, good to see. Times. Yeah, some, there's some information about BEV in the description down below. Thanks again for giving up your Sunday. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, and I'll see you again next time.